Every culture has one time or the other said, a picture is worth a thousand words. One seminal innovation that has enabled this medium of communication is a camera. Ever since the first camera, photography has evolved, adapted and been revolutionized. Nearly every person has clicked a photograph at some point of time in their lives either through a personal camera or by their phone. Photographs are an integral part of our world. They may be used for simple things such as sharing information or they can be considered a complete art form. In the era of social media, it is unclear whether the art of photography is thriving or dying. In my opinion, like everything, it is evolving. Each photograph holds some meaning and every click captures history. As the camera evolves, so do we. The tale of the camera begins with camera obscura. The working of camera obscura is similar to what we now call a pinhole camera. However, the camera obscura consists of a lens. If a hole is poked through the wall of a dark room, an inverted image is formed and projected. The camera obscura's earliest mentions are by renowned mathematicians and philosophers such as Maozi, Aristotle, and Ibn al-Haytham. In the late 1400s, Leonardo da Vinci documented detailed descriptions on the camera obscura and used the images projected by it as a reference to trace. And by the 1700s, they became common and were a beneficial resource for artists. As our tale progresses, we meet a new protagonist, this being Joseph Nisiphor Niepce, who is responsible for the first photograph ever recorded around 1826. Through his interest in lithography and alchemy, he developed the photograph on paper lined with silver chloride, which was later exposed to the sun for several days. He coined this process as heliography. Post the discovery of heliography, Louis Daguerre created a more practical and commercially successful camera prototype called Daguerreotypes, which heavily impacted the development of cameras in the mid-19th century. Alchemists worked tirelessly to create progress in developing photographs. Through their discoveries, they created a photo negative, which was beneficial in creating multiple copies of the same image. In 1839, the salt print was invented by Henry Fox Talbot, which enabled the photos to be developed on paper as positive prints from negatives. In 1831, an influential photograph developing technique was invented by Frederick Scott Archer. This process was called wet collodion process, which used a wet plate that provided finely detailed negatives that could be multiplied infinitely. This process was much cheaper and time effective when compared to its predecessors. In this part of the tale, one must commend works such as calotype, daguerreotype, salt print, cyanotype, ambrotype, the gum bichromate process, the anthotype, and the collodion process. This was the plate era of photography and cameras. As society evolved, so did the camera. The tale of the camera continues with the dry plate manufacturer called George Eastman, who designed roll film adapters for plate cameras. It wasn't as successful as he had anticipated, as the rolls were more difficult to develop and process properly when compared to glass plates. Eastman then realized that he needed a new system which used rolls of film. So in 1888, he brought the first camera that used rolls of film out into the market. He named it the Kodak. The name was chosen based on the sound the camera made in exposure. The Kodak plays a large role in this tale. The slogan for the Kodak was, you press the button and we do the rest. Kodak introduced a lower price model in 1900s called the Brownie. The Kodak company soon became the dominant photography company of the 20th century. The 20th century was the film era of photography and Eastman Kodak was the photography company for the 20th century, supplying the vast majority of film, paper, and chemistry. The original Kodak not only launched a world of amateur photography, but spawned the entire photo finishing industry and all of its branches as well. Film cameras became more common in the 20th century and more accessible to the general public. In this era, new companies emerged that enhanced the quality of photography and cameras to a whole new level, such as Nikon, Canon, Pentax, and Leica. In the film era, cameras became more common and efficient. They were used not only as a form of art, but also for daily use. Cameras slowly became convenient resources that forever changed and influenced the way we view the world. With the emergence of film cameras, communication had become more effective and enabled an infinite number of possibilities and creative prowess. 
So hi, my name is Garima Bhalla. I am Naman Bhalla. We are in this field since uh, five to six years. So in my opinion, this is not correct to say that art of photography is dying. Uh, although it is increasing day by day, as everyone owns smartphones and they can shoot photos wherever they go easily and share the same with each other. These devices make easy for everyone to click and upload their pics and show their skills of photography, which I think is increasing the art of photography. So, uh, although smartphones have some limitations, like they, they, their sensor size, we cannot increase the sensor size in smartphones, and they do not have much lens options. They do not have some editing options like ISO. So shutter speed and aperture but nowadays phone makers are also working on it and they have been improving their cameras day by day and but for like wedding and wildlife photography we still need some high end cameras which which quality phone is not able to provide we have never been to a dark room but my father belongs to that era so we know a bit about it Darkroom photography is also known as uh, traditional photography or analog photography. So it refers to the process of creating images, photogenic images, uh, through lights in light sensitive areas through chemicals. In a darkroom. Earlier a... the reels are used in the camera instead of digital SD cards and the memory card. So the reel comes in around 36, 24 and 12 exposure. Basically exposure means the number of shots. And it is of 35 mm. So like if I show you, this is a reel. It contains 36 exposures, 36 photos in it. Yes, it uh, varies for different styles. For example, if we are doing wildlife photography, we require different cameras and lenses to do the same. And yes, the different kind of cameras provide different kind of functionalities for everything. Like for like for example, we have different kind of lenses for every type of landscape, portrait, and candid and wildlife photography. We have different choice of lenses, which are professionally made for that for that shoots. Although it all depends on photographer too, uh, photographers skills too that how they shoot, how they create a composition through through these lenses. So nowadays uh, artificial intelligence is another technology that is there. In the camera which help to focus a lot, in focusing a lot and improving the quality of image also like the there is a function to track a uh, face of a, any human, even in fact in new AI we can track the dogs and the pets also like cat, dogs. So it was increasing day by day. So I am not sure if you have heard about mid journey also. When nowadays people can easily uh, dream and write the prompt, whatever prompt or whatever image they think. They can just add the prompt in mid journey and get the output of that image. So, so they don't have to even shoot or do anything. They can just type and get the image ready at their screen. It is really easy but future is unpredictable and the future of cameras are also unpredictable. So we don't know where it will go and where it will stop. It is not going to stop anywhere exactly. The world of cameras was completely restructured back in 1975 with the invention of the first ever prototype digital camera made by Steven Sasson, an Eastman Kodak engineer. Another significant milestone in the digital age of photography was the first filmless camera by Sony. Although it saved its pictures to a disc, it was not a digital camera. From then on, companies like Fujifilm, Toshiba and Dicam worked towards the bettering of the digital era of cameras with new portable models that were being sold commercially. In 1991, Kodak released the first ever digital SLR in the market called the Kodak Digital Camera System. It was popular in the scientific and journalism community. 
Throughout the 1990s, many camera and tech companies started to release digital cameras. These cameras were compact and portable, and many aimed to be cost-effective. A lot of these different cameras truly made an impact in the journey to digital photography, such as cost-effective color cameras or phones with digital cameras embedded. It was around this time that Kodak began to lose its impact in the photography world and Nikon released its first ever DSLR made from scratch solely by a manufacturer in 1999, which made the company one of the best in the business. In the early 2000s, cameras became widely accessible and started improving their storage, camera quality, portability, and sharing. In 2007, the Apple iPhone created a simple interface for digital photography as well as storage for the photographs that can be shared easily. With the rise in smartphones and their digital cameras, many didn't find the need to purchase digital cameras anymore. Hence, post-2010, the sales of digital cameras dropped by over 90%. Digital cameras are the best yet, and they truly show how far the camera has come when compared to its origins. It displays this century's technical prowess and the importance of quality photography in our lives. Hi, my name is Nitish Chopra. I am a product manager at a company called Lavish Car, which makes uh, DIY robotics kits for kids. So the first time I saw, you know, I came across some kind of a professional camera was when I was probably about 9 or 10 years old. Uh, back then we didn't have such high quality cameras in our smartphones and you would have those uh, keypad phones which would take absolutely poor photos. And uh, my dad bought a digital uh, SLR camera, or a, uh, as, as we would call it back then, uh, from Singapore. And it was a Samsung camera, a small one, a silver colored camera, I remember. And it would take uh, absolutely uh, the most sharp images uh, that I'd ever seen. And it was really amazing to see that, okay, you know, such a small device could take such sharp and clear and bright photos as well. In my current role at the organization, I also produce a lot of marketing content for the products that we launch. So in that respect, I still uh, use uh, DSLR, DSLR cameras in my everyday life. And uh, if I compare it uh, to the first time I actually bought a DSLR camera, which was when I just started college, uh, that was about seven to eight years ago. And uh, back then I didn't really know how to use the different manual functions of a DSLR camera, which is, you know, controlling the shutter speed or controlling the ISO controlling the focal length and I would just take photographs in the auto mode and and uh, my friends who knew actually knew how to control a DSLR would tell me that I am losing out on so many rich features of a DSLR and if which uh, which is something that I learned in the last uh, so many years and now if I look back uh, that, that's really true once you really understand how to use the manual features of uh, a DSLR camera the creative possibilities just open up uh, like anything. So uh, certainly the technology for how we capture uh, photographs uh, has changed substantially in the past, last I'd say three to four years. You know, um, the drone photography is becoming such a thing uh, and then now our smartphones are coming with such uh, great cameras. Uh, so those are just completely new uh, photographic mediums that did not exist before, right? And people are making such uh, creative use of uh, these platforms. And, uh, you know, these powerful uh, cameras in a smartphone has enabled almost everyone to become a photographer. So that's almost democratized the process, you know, the art of photography. And same thing with uh, with drones, you know, the kind of photos that you could take with a drone is something you would not be able to take uh, with a DSLR. So certainly advancements in technology has both made the art form more, uh, uh, you know, popular and also allowed for a lot of new creative possibilities. From complex and archaic photo developing processes to cutting edge, high resolution digital cameras, the camera has come a long way. And I'm positive that it has so much more in its future. In the age of social media and smartphones, the cameras have also evolved. They cease to exist as standalone units and have merged themselves in the dominant device used today, that is, the cell phone. And the future isn't very far. They will further adapt and become part of humans at first, maybe as glasses that we wear, or maybe as contact lenses, and perhaps one day, they may be embedded as chips in our retinas.